With May chugging along, it's time for another top Linux apps of the month video thing that I do or will be doing each month, whatever. Uh, <laughs> this is the first one, so uh, I don't know really what to call it, but it's a new thing I'm going to try. It's a new series. Each month I'm going to be finding five cool Linux apps that put and put them in a video with hope that someone finds something interesting on the list. If you'd like to suggest an app for future months, you can leave them in the comments below or send them to me via email. You can contact me via email at the linuxcast at gmail.com. So let's go ahead and jump in with the first app of this month. The first app this month is called Paru. Now, Paru is an app that circled the Linux YouTuber sphere a few months ago. And basically what this is, is a AUR helper written in Rust that is styled after Yay. Now, the reason why this is important is because Yay and... Yower and Pack AUR and a lot of these other very popular AUR helpers are either have either been abandoned or are very infrequently updated. So they have flaws in terms of you know security patches and stuff like that act that actually need to be done. Now, I still use Yay perfectly fine. I don't know if it's been updated recently or whatever or what the status of the project is, but I still prefer Yay, and that's the reason why I've actually enjoyed using y Paru this last couple weeks because it's ba very very similar to yay so if you wanted to install something you do paru dash s and then you could do something like uh, zim and then you'd enter your password and then it would go through and install the thing just like you would do with yay you, you can do a search by just doing something like paru Firefox dash ESR, something like that, and that would go through and search for every package that had Firefox ESR in it. And sometimes you get a lot of you know entries like I did here. One of them obviously will be the one that you want, which would be number one. And you just hit enter one and it would go through and download that specific package. So that is Paru. Like I said, if you've used Yay in the past, Yaru is great. I haven't necessarily noticed any speed differences or anything like that because a lot of the speed you know, things that you'd pay attention to. A lot of that stuff has to do with what mirror you're on, so it has nothing to do with the AUR helper itself. Uh, I can't say whether or not it's faster or slower than any other AUR helper. Number two on the list is an app called KeyMapper. Now, this app it is very specialized, and by what I mean there is that this isn't something that everybody would have a use for, but if you have some kind of extraneous entry device. So whether it be a mouse with a whole bunch of buttons or a key extra keyboard, like a keypad like this one here. I don't know if you can see that or not. And you want to be able to map those keys to something different than what your regular keyboard is matched to. Key mapper is something that you do. This would also work with something like a stream deck. And that's actually what this is probably made for. But basically how this works is you choose the device up here that you want to use. And in my case, we're using this winky, winky less keyboard thing that I bought on Amazon is like 60 bucks. It's a poor man's version of the stream deck. And it's just a keyboard with, uh, there's like 24 keys here, I think. And basically what this has allowed me to do is press a key on that device and then map it to a key mapping. So in this case, I've gone through and mapped them to certain key bindings that control OBS. So if I hit the letter T over here, it'll take me back to my first scene. If I hit Q, it takes me back to the main screen. If I hit W on, the, on this keyboard, I go to my Patreon page. So I can go back to T, Q, and whatever. And that way I don't have to remember these, like, Control F2, Control F3 things for, you know, OBS, it just works. And it's great because it started as a service in the background. So if you download this and you get set up and you start that service, every time you restart your computer, it'll actually remember these key bindings and start them up right away. Now, I have had some problems with that service not starting up. So you actually have to do manually go through and do sudo system ctl enable key dash mapper in order for it to work but it's worked really well after i got that set up and i'm really happy with it so if you use a stream deck or something like that or you use you know like a keypad like i have or you have your mouse has extra buttons that you'd like to map to something different than what they are uh, this could do just that number three on our list is called 
Envy. Now, I don't know a lot about this program, but it's one that I'm going to be taking a look at because it looks really cool. And basically what this is, is a 2D animation program, and it will allow you to create animated graphics. So, like a maybe perhaps a YouTube intro or something like that along those lines. And from what I've seen in the few tutorials that I've watched, it's actually very powerful. So, like I said, there's not a ton that I can tell you about it other than it looks cool and it looks like it's very powerful, but it's definitely something that I'm going to be checking out more over the next month or so. And I'd love to hear if you've tried this out or if you're interested in trying this out in the comments below, let me know how it went. Number four on our list is an app called OpenRGB. Now, this isn't something that I can actually show you how it works because I don't actually have any RGB devices that are compatible with this, but if you have a computer or computer parts that are compatible with OpenRGB, and usually that means that they're compatible with certain software vendors' RGB platforms, then this app will allow you to go through and change the colors and patterns of your RGB devices. Now, like I said, I can't show you how this works because I don't have any of those devices on hand. Even this little keyboard that I showed you earlier doesn't appear here. So that's sad for me, but it um, this doesn't. So your mileage may vary in terms of what devices might work and what might not work, but you might get lucky and some of them will work. So that will allow you to go through and change your RGB on your Linux machine, whereas before you might have had to use Windows. Mm. God forbid. And finally, the last item on our list is called Newsflash. Now, I don't particularly care for GUI-based RSS feed readers, but this one here is actually really good. It's fast. It allows you to do a ton of stuff in terms of categorization and saving and stuff. So you could actually go through, let's say we wanted to add tags to this article here. We could go through and add... Uh, several tags that would allow us to find it later on if we wanted to. There's a really cool reader mode. It will allow you to read the entire article, even if the RSS feed only contains the first part of the, the article or whatever. You hit this button, it will tr at least try to go through and get the entire article for you. That's really cool. So, if you're looking for a GUI-based RSS feed reader, I think Newsflash is probably one of the best ones out there. And that's it for this month in terms of the top five apps of the month. If, again, if you have one that you'd like to see come on the list in future months, leave it in the comments below or contact me via email. I'd like to thank you for watching. You can follow us on Twitter at the LinuxCast, on Facebook at the LinuxCast, and you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. With that in mind, I'd like to thank our current patrons, Devon, Marcus, Maglin, Donnie, Sven, Mark Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.